Hi friends, here in this video, I'll be explaining strain energy due to torsion. So, let's get started. Now, strain energy due to torsion can be explained in such a way like if we have a rod and that rod has some modulus of elasticity. In that case, when I'm applying torque to that rod, on two directions that is equal and opposite torque then what will happen there will be twisting of the rod and since there would be twisting we can also say that it is straining straining means change in shape so when there is straining in the rod some amount of energy would be stored in the rod due to the applied torque and that energy which is stored in the rod due to the applied torque would be called as strain energy due to torsion to explain it further, I'll give the formula of strain energy which is the general formula and that is strain energy is denoted by capital U and generally it is given by it is half into P into delta L where P is the applied force or load, delta L is the applied deflection due to the load. Now, where this formula comes from, it comes from a diagram which I am going to draw it over here. Here we have a graph of load P on Y axis versus deflection delta L on X axis. So the area under this graph is called as the strain energy. So whatever area which I am going to get here that is the strain energy stored in a material. Now this strain energy is due to the applied force or load. This is not the torque, torsion I am going to explain in a similar manner. At first we can say that when there is a rod and it is being pulled, in that case there will be deflection in the rod. So due to the applied pull that is applied force P, there is deflection delta L and the amount of energy stored is called as strain energy. So here the formula of strain energy is area under this curve which is half into base into height. We can say here the base is delta L, the height is corresponding to P. So it is half into P into delta L. By using the similar concept, I can write the formula for strain energy due to torsion and it can be written as in a similar manner. Strain energy due to torsion it is half into, now instead of the applied load P, here it will be torque that is the applied torque and instead of the deflection which is delta L also called as the linear deflection, here I am going to get angular deflection. So the formula becomes half into torque into the angular deflection also called as the angular twist. So due to these two opposite torques, the there is twisting of the shaft or we can say twisting of this rod. So the angle of twist is given as theta and now T is the torque whereas theta is the angular deflection or angle of twist. So that is the strain energy formula. Now I will keep this as equation number 1. Then we also know that for shafts which are subjected to twisting moment, by strength criteria the formula is it is T by J is equal to tau by R where R is the radius of the shaft. So therefore keeping T on one side the formula becomes tau into J upon the radius of the shaft and radius can be written as half of diameter. So therefore this 2 goes into the numerator, so we have 2 tau j upon capital D. Putting this value of t in equation number 1, so therefore, so the formula changes and it becomes
so here i have put the t value in equation number 1 next at the same time what can be done over here is i am keeping this as equation number second similarly i'll be using the rigidity criteria to get theta so therefore from the rigidity criteria t by j is equal to g theta by l so therefore keeping theta on one side we have t into l upon gj so that is the value of theta now putting this value of theta in again in equation number 1 keeping t as it is so therefore put theta in equation 1 so we have u is equal to half into t instead of theta we have tl upon gj so when i simplify this that will become t square l upon 2gj then i'll be keeping this as the third equation and at the same time now the t value is there with us so i'll say that referring to equation number 2 theta value i've replaced here so instead of t i can put this entire term which was there with us that is 2 tau j upon d so therefore the equation will become now as u is equal to instead of t here we have 2 tau so that will be 2 tau j upon capital d so this is the value of t the whole square into l upon 2 gj and for this we can refer equation number second where we have put the value of t now again simplifying this since there is square term to each of the terms here so this will become 4 tau square j square l upon 2 gj and we have d square now from the numerator and the denominator we can see that j and j will get cancelled out here we have so what is left is 2 tau square l upon gd square now this will be the general equation which i am going to use for both hollow as well as solid circular shaft so here is the strain energy formula and keeping this as equation capital 1 now this formula of strain energy can be used for both a solid as well as hollow circular shafts this is the general formula of strain energy which i have derived then first i am considering for solid circular shaft now for solid shaft i'll put the value of j that is the polar mi and polar mi for solid circular shaft is given as pi by 32 d is to 4 now from where this formula comes from for that you all can refer my video whose link would be provided in the description below where i had explained how to get the polar mi for a solid circular shaft similarly for a hollow shaft as well now putting this j value in equation capital 1 so therefore u will be equal to 2 tau square will remain as it is instead of j i am writing pi by 32 d raised to 4 in the numerator we have l and now gd square is left so g d square then i can simplify this formula in such a way that after cancelling d square term and d square term over here we have d square left so this would be simplified so now i can also cancel out 
2 and here this will be 16. Now this term which is left, I will write it again, tau square pi d square l upon g and 16 is left, so 16 g, I will write this formula in a special form and that will be tau square, I am writing it over here, then g also would be brought here, next pi d square l will be written separately, 16 is left, since there is multiplication sign, I am keeping 4 over here in the denominator of pi d square, so 4 remains which I will keep it with g. So when I check this equation it is similar to this that is here we have tau square pi d square l upon 16 g. So why I have written it in this form because for a circular shaft or for a rod subjected to torsion pi by 4 d square is a cross sectional area multiplied by length that gives us the volume. So this entire term is nothing but the volume of the solid circular shaft. So finally the formula would be u is equal to tau square upon 4g into the volume of the shaft. So here in this equation we get the strain energy for a solid circular shaft given by tau square upon 4g into the volume of the shaft. Now similarly I will use this equation number capital 1 to get the strain energy formula for a hollow circular shaft. So in a similar manner. So here is the cross sectional area of the hollow circular shaft. For hollow circular shaft the polar Mi is given by J is equal to pi by 32 capital D raised to 4 that is outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner diameter raised to 4. So putting J value that is the polar Mi for hollow circular shaft in equation capital 1. I am going to get the strain energy for the hollow circular shaft 2 tau square L upon GD square will remain as it is multiplied by I have kept 2 tau square L upon GD square together now I am putting the value of J and that is pi by 32 capital D raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 then here we can see that after cancelling here we have 2 and this is 16. So after this cancellation capital D square minus small d square can also be written in this form like tau square L upon GD square will remain as it is. Here we have pi by 16 capital D raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 it is like a square minus b square so can be written as a minus b into a plus b because here we have capital D raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 so a would be capital D square and b small d square so we have a minus b into a plus b next I will again simplify the formula like I have done for solid circular shaft keeping tau square upon this is 16 so instead of 16 I am keeping 4 over here and gd square will remain as it is into what is left is pi upon 4 because 16 I have split it in this way so 4 and here we have capital D square minus small d square then L which is the length I am going to multiply it over here and what is left is capital D square plus small d square. Now the volume of hollow circular shaft is area which is pi by 4 capital D square minus small d square into the length of the hollow circular shaft. So this is the volume for the hollow circular shaft. So the final form would be u is equal to 
टाउ स्क्वायर अपॉन फोर जी डी स्क्वायर इन टू द वॉल्यूम मल्टीप्लाइड बाई डी स्क्वायर प्लस स्मॉल डी स्क्वायर सो दिस इज द स्ट्रेन एनर्जी फॉर्मूला फॉर ए हॉलो सर्क्यूलर शाफ्ट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव सीन हाउ टू गेट द स्ट्रेन एनर्जी ड्यू टू टॉर्शन फॉर बोथ सॉलिड एज वेल एज हॉलो सर्क्यूलर शाफ्ट एंड वी हैव सीन हाउ टू गेट द फॉर्मूला एट द एंड इफ यूल फाइंड माई वीडियो इज हेल्पफुल यूल कैन लाइक शेयर कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल एंड शेयर इट अमंग योर फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग